on the news tonight. Anambra Governor Saludo says traditional rulers without certificate of recognition risk jail sentence. 2023 election, more groups endorse federal lawmaker one war for Senate. Defense headquarters wants fabricators of arms will face prosecution. Ukraine calls on global community to stop Russia's nuclear threat. Before the news in detail, here is a special message. Governor Chukuma Saludo has come for a total turnaround maintenance of the number state economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let us give him maximum support for the task ahead. Good evening and welcome to the news tonight. My name is Maureen Stone in UJK. Governor Chukuma Saludo says individuals who are parading themselves as traditional rulers without certificate of recognition from the Anambra State government risk jail sentence. Speaking at the governor's lodge, Amobia, when he received the traditional ruler of Oka community, Obi Gibson Mosu, and some prominent Oka people, Governor Saludo, who described as an abomination for one to parade himself as traditional ruler without a certificate of recognition from the government, maintained that his administration is committed to restoring the dignity and sanctity of traditional institution in a number of states. Governor Saludo, who said the Oka community holds 60% of what is needed for the development of a number of states, charged the people of the community to take the lead in the government's dream of making Anambra a livable and prosperous city. He regretted that the absence of peace in the community is affecting speedy development of the area as a state capital and urged the people to go back to the drawing board to ensure a lasting peace that will bring even development in the area. Professor Saludo, who during the event regretted the absence of relaxation park in Oka and other facilities needed in a capital city, called on the people of Oka to advise the youth against chasing away intended investors through land speculation. Earlier, the traditional ruler of Oka community, Obin Wosu, told the governor that the essence of the visit was to thank him for the role he played in safeguarding the traditional institution in Oka last September, regretting how an imposter had been parading himself as a traditional ruler. Obin Wosu, during the visit, commended the governor for all his development accomplishments in the state and for restoring people's confidence in governance and reassured him of the total support of Oka community. Among the Oka delegation were the traditional Prime Minister of Oka community, Chief Benjamin Okoye, Professor Austin Nonyelu, Chief Ken Ekwenugo, and Chief Sebastian Anekwe, Chief Oke Nwana, Ken Chukura, and Mr. Abuchi Mwazo. The Chief of Staff to the Governor, Mr. Ernest Ezaji, and Deputy Chief of Staff and State Director of Protocol, Mr. Chine Dungwe, were present during the visit. A copy of appreciation letter was later presented to the Governor. As the 2023 general elections draw closer, a group known as Oka North and South Sig Doze Wangwo has thrown the weights behind the candidates of the All Progressives Grand Alliance Abga for Anambra Senatorial District, Honorable Doze Wangwo. The group made this known at Oka South Local Government Headquarters during the executive meeting of the 20 wards in Oka South Council area. Correspondent Chibuzo Obidike has the details. The group is a grassroots pioneer movement for the two-time House of Representatives member. Honorable Wang Huo, the group has already embarked on different philanthropic gestures on behalf of the candidates to get his name across all households and lives of all constituents. They have also sponsored the mounting of billboards in every villages in the council areas. Addressing the gathering, the convener of the event, Prince Ikechuku Ndiwe, revealed that the support group is his brainchild which is aimed at mobilizing support and ensuring that Dozia Wangwa's campaign works stronger, saying that the group is ever ready to deliver. He pointed out that the gesture was a voluntary decision of members of the council area in appreciation of the accountability, impactful and quality representation that Honorable Wangwa demonstrated in the House of Representatives for the past years. But this time around, Inaya you see that we are no more doing party things because you might have a party candidate but he will not be the voice of the people or the choice of the people 
But this time around, by men looking, Dozien Wanko is the choice and is the voice of ma the mandate of people that he is going to represent us come 2023 in Anambra Senatorial District. The woman leader of the group, Mrs. Vera Atuigwe and Mrs. Anwareka Mwefu, assured the candidate of the women's support in the council areas. In our part of my, I cannot even put a name. The same one called Bro, a Bro, only a Jiri Ebuliebu, especially in our south. Oh, madam, I actually do we we shine. Madam, I have work for you. If I put the beer, you know where you find our Madam Jiri Jiri. You know the people there, but no Bro, so so sincere, I call you so. I need to join now. I have governor, and I'm brave state. No, we get no idea. So now, my wife and I, we do not put the CK. With full force. To me, if I'm to say, I must say that Doze Wangpo is the most credible person for the Senate. I have no doubt about it. And uh, because of his behavior, everybody loves him. You can, from what I'm seeing, everybody loves him, want to promote him, to go there and bring our team and come back. The coordinator of non-indigenous members of the group, Mr. Clement Ebentu, who said he has lived in Anambra State for 26 years and can attest the pedigree of Honorable Wankwo in keeping to his promises to the people. He said non-indigenous in the state have benefited from the transparent representation of Honorable Wankwo over the years and revealed that they have made a collective decision in backing the federal lawmaker to make more achievement on behalf of his constituents. Receiving the people at the council headquarters, the Transition Committee Chairman for Aka South Local Government Area, Mr. Thank God and Ago, appreciated the group for speaking with one voice and pointed out that the representation goes beyond personal interests and described Honorable Wangpo as an individual whose impact and love for his constituents have earned him the choice of the people. The Aka South Mayor encouraged the group to campaign vigorously for Dozien Wangpo in Aka Chibuzo Bidiki. ABS News. The Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps, Anambra State Command, has arrested eight persons suspected to be transporting and dealing with adulterated petroleum products as well as trans transloading adulterated products. The Anambra State Commandant of the Corps, Mr. Chikere Chukudi, said that this during the press briefing in Oka, correspondent Chibuzo Okoye tells us more. Addressing the press, Mr. Chukudi said that the commandant vandalism team intercepted and arrested four suspects, namely Ahmed Luka, Mohamed Sani, John Sari, and Ali Ahmed Jafra, all male and from Nasrawa State, at Immigration Junction, Oka, transporting 40,000 liters of suspected adulterated petroleum product with truck number Nasrawa KRV-825XB, while Jerry Aga from Nasrawa, Christian Asa, James Tasu, and Silas Mutoku, all male from Benue State, were arrested transloading 40,000 liters of suspected adulterated product at a fleet station in Umu Uoka with long hose, one pumping machine, and a truck with registration number Baoshi 595XR. The commandant said that the arrests were made possible due to the operational strategies put in place by the command since his arrival and geared towards curbing the activity of those engaging in illegal dealings on petroleum products and pipeline vandalization. Mr. Chudi noted that the command will intensify its efforts towards the eradication of oil theft and economic sabotage to the federal government's main source of revenue. He further appreciated the support of the Commandant General of the NSCDC, Dr. Ahmed Audi, and Governor Chukwu Masaludo of Anambra State in ensuring that they do their job seamlessly and promised that they will continue to protect government's critical assets and infrastructure and assured the continuous protection of lives and property of the Anambra even as attributed their successes to the synergy existing among all the security agencies working in Anambra State. We are going to put in our best to provide adequate security for people of Anambra State. Our men are out and we are very much ready. One of the suspects, Mr. John Sari, told ABS that he was escorting one of the tankers conveying the suspected adulterated product in Oka. This is Tibu Zokoye for ABS News. 
The member representing Anambra East and West Federal Constituency, Honorable Chinedo Bidigwe, has called on the federal government to urgently find a lasting solution to the perennial flooding threatening the life and property of Nigerians. Honorable Obidigwe made this appeal when he visited his constituents that were displaced by the flood in the various holding centers created by the Anambra State Government at Umweri Unity Hall, Anambra East Local Government Area, Iwaku, Ifitogwari, Umweje, and all in Ayamelum Council Area, among numerous other places. Chibuzo Okoye has the details. Addressing his constituents at each of the camps visited, Andre Bobidigo, who gave financial support at the camp, regretted that the perennial flooding has cost his constituents fortunes, their means of livelihood, as well as human lives. The lawmaker, who is the deputy chairman, House of Representatives Committee on Environment, who was deeply saddened with the conditions of his people, noted that he had written to the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, the Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, to immediately supply relief materials to the people and wondered why nothing has been done even when he submitted the letters by himself and promised that he will ensure that both the agency and the ministry respond to their duties as all Nigerians must be treated equally. He commended Governor Chukuma Saludo's administration for its doggedness and responsiveness in ensuring that the flood displaced persons are well taken care of and called on the federal government to dredge the river Niger and Omanbla River and build dams that would contain water each time Cameroon releases water from its dam to bring a permanent solution to the humanitarian crisis affecting the people. Right, so of course I have moved the motion on this aspect and uh, the motion was very clear. The Nigerian government should construct their own dam to contain the flood whenever uh, Cameroon releases their own dam. You cannot quantify the level of damage and decay. People are dying. Of hunger. I have written to Nema. I have written to Minister of Humanitarian. Thanking the lawmaker for his benevolence, the traditional ruler of Ezra Gulotu Aguleru, Igwe Lawrence Mwafia said that the flood has brought untold hardship to the people, even as he prayed God to bless Honorable Blobidigwe, whom he described as the best thing that has happened to the federal constituency. <laughs> One of the flood victims, Mrs. Udume Luo Ibano, at Ibahu Holding Center, described Honorable Bidigwe as a pillar that brings joy to his people and urged other lawmakers to emulate him. <laughs> Earlier, Andre Blobidigwe visited some of his constituents who were camping at different locations not captured by the Anambra State Government, where he extended the same monetary largesse to them. Among those in the lawmaker's entourage during the visit were the member representing Anambra West constituency in the status of assembly, Andre Patrick Obalomodoba, the traditional ruler of Mpunan to Aguilar, Igwe Johnson Banefu, the Anambra East Chairman of the All Progressives Grand Alliance, Chief Joseph Ehualo, his Anambra West counterpart, Chief Charles Ahualo, a former Transition Committee Chairman of Anambra East Local Government Area, Barista Obiweke, among numerous others. This is Chibu Zokoye for ABS News. The Directorate of Defense Media Operations has said that Dekon Kaduna is the only establishment in Nigeria mandated by government to produce arms and ammunition, and then that all those who engage in fabricating local ammunition are committing an offense against the federal government of Nigeria and will be punished accordingly. Princess Ekwe Ajide has the details. The Director of Defense Media Operations, Major General Musa Dam Madami, gave this warning while clarifying issues at the bi-weekly press briefing on troops, activities, operational successes and challenges in the various operational theaters of the six geopolitical zones of the country. He stated that there is only one establishment authorized by government to produce arms and ammunition in Nigeria, and as such, any other person found to be doing that will be arrested 
and made to face the full weight of the law. Dan Madami had earlier noted that troops arrested as suspected Boko Haram terrorists and the Islamic State of West Africa province armor technician at Gorum village in Mongunu local government area of Borno State with 300 empty cases of armor suspected to be used for fabricating 7.62 mm specials. The director of media operations who had said troops also discovered and destroyed over 70 illegal refining sites in the south, south and southeast zones called on stakeholders including the media and the citizenry to continue to cooperate with the military and other security agencies in their quest to restore peace and tranquility to the country through the provision of prompt and credible information on the activities of terrorists and other criminal elements in their respective locality. Any other person who is into that act and is caught definitely has committed an offence against the Federal Republic of Nigeria and will be dealt appropriately with. In Abuja, Princess Ilkwi Ajide, ABS News. The Nigeria-Saudi Arabia Joint Commission holding in Abuja has ended after two days of intensive negotiations on several draft agreements and the memoranda of understanding presented by the two countries dealing with various aspects of Nigeria-Saudi cooperation. Once again, Princess Ekwi Ajide is standing by for the report. The Minister of State for Foreign Affairs, Zuberu Dada, said discussions and negotiations will continue on pending MOUs and agreements which could not be concluded during the current session, particularly those on investment promotion and protection agreement and that on the avoidance of double taxation. He, however, expressed pleasure that drafts held under three broad working groups covering the fields of education, culture, youths, sports, defense, security, drugs and human trafficking, economic, trade and investment, hard, labor, among others, were fruitful and the MOUs were signed. The minister commended the experts for the good work done, expressing belief that the conclusions and the outcome of the session will go a long way in uplifting and advancing the existing level of bilateral relations for the mutual benefits of their people. It's a Zuberu promise that Nigeria is committed to implementing the MOUs and agreements signed with a view to elevating the cooperation between the countries to a higher level. The Saudi Arabian Deputy Minister of Environment, Water and Agriculture for Fisheries, Engineer Ahmed Ekimesi, lends his voice to the call that recommendations of the session be subject to implementation and development to contribute to deepening relations between the two countries in various fields, especially economic and trade cooperation for the benefit of all. He also hopes that the signing of agreement between the Federation of Saudi Chambers and the Federation of Nigerian Chambers will widen the horizon to provide opportunities for the private sector of both countries. Based on the desire of the government, of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the Republic of Nigeria enhance joint cooperation, deepen and existing points of friendship between to the two countries, and develop cooperation in economic, social, and cultural field, which was built civilization background since several times, as well as the common understanding to achieve the interest of the two countries and enhance cooperation between them. The third session of the joint session is expected to hold in Rida, Saudi Arabia at a date to be chosen by the host country in Abuja. Princess Ilkwi Ajide, ABS News. Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky says Russian officials have begun to prepare their society for the possible use of nuclear weapons, but added he does not believe Russia is ready to use them. In an interview, President Zelensky denied having urged strikes on Russia, claiming that an earlier remark had been mistranslated. 
In recent weeks, the Ukrainian army has recaptured large swaths of territory in a successful counter-offensive that has forced Russian troops to abandon long-held positions. In what Kiev describes as Moscow's response to its defeats, President Vladimir Putin has incorporated four partially occupied regions of Ukraine. The annexations, widely dismissed as illegal, have raised fears of a possible escalation in the seven-month war. President Putin and other senior Russian officials have suggested that nuclear weapons, possibly smaller tactical weapons, could be used to defend those areas, although Western officials say there has been no evidence of Moscow, that Moscow is prepared to do so. Victor Osime could be available for selection when Napoli take on criminals on Sunday. Osimen has been out of action since he sustained a hamstring injury in Napoli 4-1 victory over Liverpool in the Champions League last month. The 23-year-old striker returned to individual training last week and he was expected to be on the bench for Napoli's clash at Ajax on Tuesday. Unfortunately, he was not considered fit for the game. However, according to reports from Limit Limitino, Osimen looks set up to be named in Napoli's court that will take on criminals at the stadium Glovani Zini. Still, the, the Nigerian striker may only make a calm appearance to prevent a relapse. Moreover, the participants have been firing on all sil cylinders since Osimen's injury with Simone and Rapadori in hot form. And do remember, you can follow news from programs from ABS from any part of the world by liking our Facebook page at ABS Radio Television. Subscribe to our YouTube page at ABS Television. Okay? Follow us on Instagram at ABS Radio TV. Log on to our website, www.absradiotv.com. And now a recap of the main points. Anambra State Governor Soludo has said traditional rulers without certificate of recognition risk jail sentence. 2023 election, more groups have endorsed federal lawmaker one war for Senate. Defense headquarters has warned that fabricators of arms will face prosecution. Ukraine has called on global community to stop Russian nuclear threats. Here is a special message. Governor Chukuma Saludo has come for a total turnaround maintenance of the Anambra State economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let us give him maximum support for the task ahead. And that's it on the news tonight. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Maureen Stone in Ujoke. Catch you for.